In this module, you will become familiar with conducting a literature review for academic research. This module is split into four parts. By the end of this module, the learner should be able to use library and other tools to search the existing body of research for work relevant to their topic, identify the steps in the literature review process, recognize and locate the types of databases often searched, explain the criteria for evaluating the quality of literature, and select ways of organizing the material found. The purpose of a literature review is to find relevant and recent research related to your chosen topic that can be presented in condensed form. The literature review serves to present your understanding of past research and how your research will serve to enhance or contradict previous work. Literature, in the context of research, is any academic or peer-reviewed writings published on a given topic. This can include textbooks or journal articles. A peer-reviewed journal article is any writing that has been anonymously reviewed by impartial reviewers in a researcher's discipline, hence peer-reviewed. The peer reviewers check the manuscript for accuracy and assess the validity of the research methodology and procedures. If appropriate, they suggest revisions. If they find the article lacking in scholarly validity and rigor, they reject it. In this internet age, it is easy to think that a quick search on Google can provide you with all the literature review you could ever need. And while you will use the internet search engines and specific websites in your literature review, internet sources are not considered valid literature when conducting research in an academic setting, especially if you will be publishing your research in a peer-reviewed journal or submitting it as part of your master's or doctoral work. Why shouldn't you use information found on the internet? Misinformation is one of the biggest reasons. There is no quality assurance when it comes to information found on the internet. Anyone can post anything. In most cases, information found on the web has not been checked for accuracy. They have differing quality, purposes, and biases. Some websites have sponsors who pay for specific content to promote their products or ideas. There are websites that voice opinions rather than informed arguments, or are meant to be entertaining rather than informative. Information on websites may be old, and the information found there out of date. As a researcher, you are responsible for evaluating all your sources, including the information found on the internet. I want to also take a moment to discuss open AI tools such as ChatGPT. We will discuss them more in our lesson on ethics, but I want to touch on their use in literature review here. It can be tempting to use an open AI tool like ChatGPT as a search engine, asking it to provide information on a topic. But just as you cannot validate the veracity of sources on the average website, you cannot verify the information output from OpenAI. It uses information from other users as training data to formulate responses to your questions. This can provide erroneous information. Unlike a Google search engine, which sends you to the primary source of the information it has found in its search, the URL, OpenAI provides you with summary information and does not include the source data used to generate its response. So you have no way of verifying if the information you are receiving is correct. I would strongly caution against using OpenAI tools for literature review, especially as the primary tool for gathering information. I think it is important to note that most of the developers working on AI tools and other machine learning algorithms don't really understand how these algorithms work and learn. So now that we know what literature is not, let's go over what literature is. Literature is work that is published in a scholarly journal. Some journals are sponsored by a professional scholarly society professional association, or university academic department. 
The journal should describe itself as a peer-reviewed publication on its website. When in doubt, you can always ask your university librarian or your advisor. Large publication databases like Science Direct and Taylor and & Francis are good sources of peer-reviewed journals and should be used in conjunction with your university library database. Google Scholar and ResearchGate are OK databases and can help you find open access versions of journal articles but non-peer-reviewed work will also make it into their search results, so make sure you are vigilant. Literature contains a descriptive title. The title should provide a detailed description of materials used and mechanisms evaluated. Peer-reviewed journal article titles are not meant to be catchy or clickbait, but to be informative. The title will be the first indicator of whether a journal article is applicable or not to your research. Literature is written in a serious and scientific tone. Discipline-specific jargon will be used throughout the journal article and its writing will be in a manner to convey results, findings, and conclusions rather than opinions. These articles are written to convey large amounts of information and are not meant to be quick reads or have flowing prose. They are typically written in the third person to focus the writing on the research and away from the individual researcher. There will be an abstract on the first page. An abstract summarizes the hypothesis, rationale, and findings outlined within the paper. The abstract should contain sufficient information for you to determine how the article fits into your research and literature review. In the resource section of this course, I have provided a detailed explanation on how an abstract is written. Journal articles are organized by headings. Typically, those headings include an introduction, theory, or background literature review, methods, discussion, results, and conclusion. Sometimes there will also be a section labeled future work where the researcher will outline what they believe are the next steps in the research that need to be done, whether by them or another researcher. Other times this will be included in the conclusion section. However, there are times where the article does not explicitly discuss future work and you must deduce what comes next based on what they studied and what they excluded. Credentialed authors are listed. Journal articles will list all the authors of the paper, including their organization or university. The corresponding author will be noted and their contact information provided. This is so other researchers can contact them should they have any questions regarding their research. It is a common practice to contact other researchers and ask them questions about their research. If you think you might have questions while reviewing someone's work, I encourage you to reach out. Citations are listed throughout the article. Unlike an internet source, a journal article is required to cite any non-original work, claim, or theory mentioned within. This allows other researchers to verify the origin of the information and provide credit to fellow researchers for their work. Along with the inline citations will be a list of corresponding references at the end of the journal article. The information provided in each citation allows the researcher to find the corresponding referenced work. In the resources section of this course, I have provided guidance on how to read a citation. A list of funding sources, conflicts of interest, and acknowledgments. Ethically, any funding sources, including grants, should be listed. Each journal has a slightly different format, but this information is typically found at the end of the journal article before the references. All authors submitting work for peer reviewed publication must attest to any conflicts of interest or lack thereof with respect to their work. 
An example of a conflict of interest would be working for the manufacturer of testing equipment used in your research. Finally, it is important to acknowledge fellow researchers and colleagues that you collaborated with on your work or gave you insight on a topic. This circles back to our discussion in an earlier lesson on collaboration. Literature review is a process. There are many descriptions of the process that can be found at various university libraries and in many books. They vary on the title of steps and number of steps, but there is a large amount of similarity in how the process is described. I am choosing to use the steps described by University of Texas Libraries. We will briefly touch on each step here, and in the next two lessons of this module, we will go in depth into each of these steps. The first step in the literature review process is deciding what is the focus of your literature review. What are you researching? You will be doing literature reviews many times during your research, each time maybe for different reasons or to revisit a topic and get more information. We have discussed the need to do literature review to develop your research questions. Once you have your research questions, your next step may be to develop your experimental methods, and that will require a focused literature review on how other researchers have conducted experiments, what experiments they have conducted, and why. Step two suggests that you determine your inclusion and exclusion criteria. What will your search criteria be? and what will you remove from search results as irrelevant. Next, select the databases you will search in and start generating results. If you aren't sure which databases to search in, you can speak to your university librarian or advisor to get some advice. We'll talk about this step more in the next lesson, but some of the common databases to search are Google Scholar, ScienceDirect, and Taylor and Francis. However, depending on your area of research, there may be more appropriate databases to search. Once you have your results, you need to review them. These two steps are iterative, so feel free to do this in batches. Get a set of search results, review them, pull another round of search results, then review them, and so on. During this step, you should also be downloading any PDFs of the literature you have determined is relevant. In the last lesson of this module, we will talk about how to get a full journal article when they are behind paywalls. Once you start seeing more results that do not meet your criteria, or you see the same search results repeatedly, you can stop pulling search results and start synthesizing the literature. Now it's time to dig into the individual sources you have found. This is reading with a critical eye. You are synthesizing and analyzing these sources to determine what they did, why they did it, and how well they did it. Is this source, upon closer inspection, a source worthy of including in your research and citing? What information does it give you and how does it inform your research? In the last lesson of this module, I will go over a tool that will help you rank your results so you have an ordered list of what to review first.